Up till now, we've been prophesying in part because we haven't seen the whole plan of God. We haven't seen the whole picture. And God has sent prophets to prophesy for the destruction of America. Demetrius Dudeman was sent to America, but he was not shown the whole thing. He only saw certain cities burning. All of America is going to burn. Without question, America is Mystery Babylon. And in one hour, her judgment will come. God has seen the arrogance of this nation. Without question, the cup of sin, iniquity, has reached the brim. Maybe not for the whole world yet, but at least for America it has. The cup is trembling. That which overflows from God's cup is going to be poured out upon America. In other words, America will receive the punishment of their own doings. They will reap what they've sown. As I stated in the last message, the glory is departing. God's protection is leaving America. This was once a nation that was feared by God or feared by the nations around about. This was a nation that was feared. A God-fearing nation. All the nations feared America. And there were those that envied America, like Russia, China. But for the most part, nations feared America. And that was America's glory. But the glory is departing. Because we've turned the glory of God into a shame. And we're naked before the other nations. We no longer have a covering of his glory. We no longer have the covering of his presence in this nation. We no longer have the covering of his blessing in this nation. We no longer will be protected by God in this nation. In fact, the prophet began to, was praying for Israel. And God said, don't pray for him anymore. Without question, this, um, this United States of America is a nation that we don't pray for anymore. But yet God said to Jeremiah, go down to the potter's house. The nation in which I pronounce judgment against, if it repents, I will do it good. Now, we are told that in the last days God would send the spirit of Elijah, turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, the children to the fathers, lest he smites the earth with a curse. Who knows if the Lord will return, leave a blessing for America? I'm not telling you it's too late for America. I'm telling you, as Jonah told Nineveh, that we're getting close to the place where the final warning is coming for America. America will have to reject the warning of God before it burns. That doesn't mean one city here, one city there can't burn. That doesn't mean God cannot begin judging America. 
I saw it with my own eyes in a vision. I saw the George Washington Bridge vaporized before my eyes. God gave me the scripture in Psalm 91. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked, but it shall not come nigh thee. So God can allow certain cities to be, to burn. All it takes is a, a nuclear uh, suitcase. That's all it takes. And I'll tell you right now, I believe there are already suitcases in America with nuclear weapons in them. Just a matter of God holding it back. And it's already being said by many that what, what is coming will far surpass will look will make 911 will look like a picnic because nobody heeded the warning of the towers falling that was a warning from god even billy uh, even uh, david wilkerson said the towers have fallen and we have not repented we have not listened. We have not heard. It could be that New York will be the first place nuked because he's already removed his prophet from that, from that city. I believe God has a man of God for every major city in the United States. I believe he has a prophet in each city. And that prophet is called by God to call that city to repentance. He has a leader over every major city to gather the people together, to gather the nations together. But it starts with a town, then it starts with cities, it starts with states, and then it goes to countries. But God is gathering right now. If a city will not repent, God's so merciful to start with towns and then cities. Instead of just wiping America out all at once, or just wiping out all the whole world at once, God didn't wipe out any other part except Sodom and Gomorrah. And he, d he dealt with a few other cities around Sodom and Gomorrah. But he didn't wipe out the whole world. He's merciful. But God sent angels. And you say, well, when's God going to send the angels to America? He's not going to. He's sending his ministers. The word angel means messenger. God is going to send forth his angels, his messengers, not angels angelic as far as from heaven, like he did with Lot, <coughs> like he did with Sodom and Gomorrah. But now the Lord has those that he's prepared for this hour that are going to bring warning and eventually will bring the words, the very words that will bring judgment upon a nation or upon a city, upon a town. The scripture tells us that God would give, gave one, one city. Gave another one two cities. Gave another one three cities. Gave another one five cities. He gives to us what we can be a steward over. Now the Lord may give you a whole country. And it's up to you to obey God and to lead that country or that city or that state or that town to God. But if they won't hear the warning of the prophet. There's only one other thing that can happen. The fire must come and sanctify that area. It must come and deal with that area. But that area will never be built on again. Are you listening? It'll be so destroyed that God, wherever he judges with fire, will never be built again. In fact, Henry Groover recently was... He was asking God to judge a couple of buildings. And the Lord said, don't ask, me to don't ask me to judge those buildings. Don't ask me to destroy those buildings. 
And Henry said, why, God? And God said, because those buildings will be judged when the other buildings around those buildings are judged. When I judge this city, all those buildings are going to come down. All those buildings will burn. We need to work with the Lord. Be led by the Spirit. Because the cities, whole cities are going to burn when they reject the word of warning. Are you listening? God is merciful. But I believe with all my heart. I don't know which city's coming first. I don't know which town's coming first. I don't know where it's going to hit first, but it's coming. I don't know where that man of God is. I don't know where that prophet is right now, what city it is, where this man of God is interceding and, and crying out to God right now that and standing in the gap. I don't know what city that is, but I know one thing, that God is going to have a witness, in e at least one witness in every major city in the United States, in every major town, in every major uh, state. The gospel will be preached in all the world, and the end will come. Now, you know if God has put that responsibility on you. Don't take that upon yourself. That would not be wise. We must understand, folks, that this nation, America, is right now at the very door, at the very gate of God's wrath. The judgment of Almighty God is coming upon this nation. This nation will not only burn, this nation will be no more. The Lord told me, he said, America, you once stood so tall. You once was so great. You came out of nowhere, but now you'll be no more. Because you said, God doesn't see, God doesn't hear, God does hear, and God does see. This United States of America, right now, is under warning. The warnings are going out. They're going to go out. The alarm is going to be sounded in this nation. War is coming. God is going to allow the enemies of America to eat up this nation, to devour this nation. The glory's departing. This is not a laughing matter. This is not a message that you would take and Say, oh, you got to hear this message as far as it's such great preaching. No, this is the time to call for an solemn assembly. This is the time where the, the ministers need to weep between the porch and the altar. And I'm not talking about for a whole world. I'm talking about for this nation. This nation, judgment has been pronounced. Now, in the days ahead, if man had their way and the laws were changed in America, what I'm saying right now, if it was to get into the masses and, 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 and a lot of people were to hear this, I would be known as a terrorist. I would be known as an enemy of the United States of America because of the words that I'm speaking. Because I'm not speaking good words. Are you listening? You look in the Old Testament, you won't find prophets speaking good, smooth words over nations that turn their back on God. I'm not going to speak good words over America because America's in trouble. I'm going to tell you the truth. If this nation does not repent, if this nation does not turn, 
this nation will burn and then it will be no more. It's time to call a solemn assembly. It's time, folks, to rally the people together, to gather the people together. It's time to pray. It's time to intercede. It's time to wail. It's time to travail. It's time to cry out to God. Hear the word of the Lord. Cry unto me. Cry unto me. America, cry unto the Lord, for your days are numbered. Your days have been numbered, America. Praise you, Jesus. I keep getting this scripture from the Lord. If that nation upon whom I have pronounced judgment, will turn. If they will turn, that same nation upon which I have pronounced judgment, I will do them good. Even though God told Jeremiah, don't pray for these people anymore. God says, go down to the potter's house, Jeremiah. If God's given that scripture to me, that's because there's still hope for America. I can't imagine there is. But God is long-suffering. Willing that none should perish. That none should be lost. Now you can say, we know what America's going to do. We know they're going to continue to get hard. We know they're going to, that doesn't change the love of God. That doesn't change his mercy. As long as there's another day for America, the mercy of God is renewed every, every day. Every morning, his mercy is new. That means if we, the sun comes up in America, we have another day. But as the Lord just told us, our days in America are numbered. The Lord has already told me personally that I have a worldwide ministry. I won't even be in America. I don't know where you're going to be, but I'm not going to be here. And the Lord's already told me that he's going to protect my family. He's going to protect my children. He's going to watch over them, not to worry about them. He told me several years ago, I was on the computer, and the Lord said, shut off your computer. I immediately shut it down, and I got quiet before the Lord, and I said, Lord, what is it? He said, get your running shoes on. And I said, what do you mean, Lord? And he said, when they persecute you in one city, flee to the next. What's your running shoes? We're supposed to have our feet shod with the gospel of peace. He's not talking about Nikes. He's not talking about running shoes in the physical. He's talking about getting ready, being ready, being prepared. When you see the state of Massachusetts passing laws that give people no choice, laws that say you must allow a boy that thinks he's a girl to go into the bathroom with a girl. You got to understand, folks, God does not tolerate that. It's one thing to do something on, in your own dark corner. But when you start affecting others and saying they don't, have, they don't have a right, 
They don't have any choice. And if they speak out against it, that they're going to be uh, in trouble. That's when God steps in. So maybe it's Massachusetts that's going to be taken out first. Or maybe it'll be just the areas where this is instituted. But I'm telling you right now, folks, as it was with Sodom and Gomorrah, so shall it be with every single area that turns their, that's turned over to a reprobate mind and God gives them up. I'm not saying flee from America. I'm saying we need to repent. Now the day will come. Just as the angels told Lot, flee. Flee to the mountain. The message will come. Whether people heed it or not, the message will come. Get out of America. Or get out of this certain town. Or get out of this certain city. Because fire's coming. And it won't be some angel with wings. Listen, folks. God is going to send the foolishness of preaching. He's going to send his prophets. He's going to send his messengers. He only had Abraham during the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. He wasn't going to send Abraham in there. So he sent the angels. And these people wanted to fornicate with angels. You've got to understand. When people's minds get so corrupted. And, and it gets to the point where it corrupts the government. All the way to the highest level to the president. Where you see the president pushing on agendas. That now they're not even just interested in straight homosexuality, but now it, in, in lesbianism, but now it's transgender. When you start seeing things in the paper where this, uh, where parents are fighting for their daughter that's only, uh, excuse me, not daughter, son, that was born a boy, but is being, acting like a girl since he, he was a, four years old and now the school system is saying your child can no longer go in the bathroom with a girl because he's really a boy and you see parents fighting for their child and taking that to court folks you gotta understand when you look at that symbol, the Statue of Liberty, that's not a woman. That's not a lady. It was never intended to be. The Statue of Liberty is a man that's dressed in drag. And this is a symbol of the liberty of the United States of America. And the lantern that's in her hand, the torch that's in her hand, is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. That torch does not stand for the light of truth. That is the light of the Illuminati. That's the Luciferian light. That's the same torch that they use in the Olympics. Are you listening? America is mystery Babylon. The ley lines and everything that's been set up with the with the, even the Washington Monument. That's a sundial. The same sundials they use in Egypt. At the top is a pyramid. The Pentagon is a pyramid. If you take the, the corners of every point of the Pentagon and draw it up to the top, it becomes a pyramid. And then you can take a line and go straight across from the top of the pyramid and right over to the Washington Monument. It would look kind of strange if they had a pyramid sitting there and where the Pentagon is, wouldn't it? you think the American people would have tolerated that? It's a hidden pyramid. 
And the CIA is nothing more different than Gnosis. This is Mystery Babylon. Are you listening? This nation trusts in the spirit of Babylon, in the spirit of Egypt, in the shadow of Egypt. They trust in the horses of Pharaoh. And there's a Pharaoh in the White House. There is a Pharaoh in the White House. He's worse than a Muslim. There's a Pharaoh in the White House. Leading America into Egypt. He's already bowed down to the king of Egypt. No president has ever bowed down to the king of Egypt. Except Obama. He's leading this country. Into the shadow of Egypt. Not the shadow of the almighty. In the shadow of the almighty. The glory is departing. The Statue of Liberty sits upon its own piece of land in the middle of the sea. Those that, that look to the Statue of Liberty and idolize the Statue of Liberty don't realize, but those people do not live by the laws of the land. They live by the laws of the sea. There's a different law that governs the sea than it does the land. And they believe in Atlantis, a city under the sea. Are you listening to what I'm telling you folks? This stuff goes back to Hitler, Nazism. They believe there was a city called Atlantis that is now under the sea. They're trying to build again Atlantis. They're trying to restore Atlantis. They don't live by the laws of the land. They don't live by the same laws that you, that you and I do. And when you see the Catholic Church that has the same monument, which is a sundial from Egypt, And then you see a place called the Holy See, which is the military of the Vatican. It's not S-E-E. -E. It's S-E-A and it's S-E-E. -E. Are you listening? The Holy See, the Roman Empire, Everything, the same spirit that was in the days when Jesus was on the earth, it's all coming back. And it really never left. But it's coming in America. Because America has rejected God. The shadow of Egypt. They trust in the shadow of Egypt. If you was to put the same clothing with the gold necklace, put Obama on a, on a throne, and put lions on the side of him, and put his wife on his side, and I think there's even pictures on the internet where people have done this. It's not that he is Pharaoh in the sense that he's trying to be Pharaoh. It's a spirit, folks. It's the spirit of Pharaoh with the shadow of Egypt. The Pentagon is a pyramid. The uh, Monument is a sundial.
No wonder the scripture says, come out from among them and be separate. In one hour, her judgment came. You look at the valuables of the mystery Babylon, you look at the valuables, and the, the least valuable thing on the list was put at the bottom of the list was the souls of men. When a nation puts souls last on the list of all their treasures, of all their valuables, when you have people like Donald Trump, that are bragging about their wealth and not keeping it secret, we're in trouble. This nation has no more protection from its enemies. When you have a pharaoh sitting in the White House that's looking over at the president of Russia, telling him, we'll work this out. When, when, these, when this election is over, we'll talk. This is on, this is on audio. This has been recorded. There's a traitor in the White House. And the reason why nobody does anything is because of fear. And the only ones that are going to do anything are the ones that are not afraid. But this is the problem. The only way that you can truly be fearless is perfect love. God's love. There's no other way. Only God's love can make you fearless. You won't be afraid to die if you're filled with God's love. You won't be afraid of what man can do unto you if you're walking in God's love. I hear of testimonies where Henry Groover has gone into areas of the cities of the United States where police officers are afraid to go. Where the blacks and the Mexicans, one on one side of the street, the other's on the other side of the street, and they're at war with one another. Where he went right down to a Catholic church at the end of the street and they're all chained up. And the Catholic priest told Henry Groover, you want to stay away from these gangs. This is a dangerous area. And Henry Groover, led by the Holy Ghost, went in and out of those homes and brought peace between the blacks and the Mexicans in that area. There hasn't been a killing in that area since. Crime rate has gone completely down. That's just a little bit of what God can do. That's just one man that's been willing to walk in the love of Christ. Fearless. I'm not advocating we go do it on our own. I'm saying working with the Lord. Our days are numbered in America. There's no question about that. Oh, God. Praise you, Jesus. Now the scripture that comes to me is Arise and shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. He talks about how that the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Lest the Lord draws, they aren't going to come. 
We need to be walking in the glory of God. It's time to arise. Now he said you have to arise first before you're going to shine. Arise and shine. If you don't arise, you're not going to shine. If you don't take a stand for Jesus, you're not going to shine in this hour. We must first arise. Rise up. Take a stand. Amen? He sought for a man that would stand in the gap and he found none. That's a challenge to us. Is it going to be the same for America? He sought for a man, but he found none. He says to Isaiah, who will go for us? Who can we send? Now, the Lord said, if I give you warning and you don't warn the people, he said, the blood is required at your hands. I'll leave you with that thought. 